Hi, my name is Michael Eiler. I'm a digital lab and shop manager in the electrical and computer engineering department here at Brigham Young University. Uh, today, I'm going to be going in a little more depth into how to design good quality schematics using Eagle. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to stop by the shop or uh, watch this as many times as your, your heart desires. Um, today, we're going to be doing a pretty basic circuit. Um, we're going to use a little microcontroller called the AT Tiny 85, um, which is going to be powered via a 3.3 volt battery. Oh, button cell or 3 volt battery, I think, actually. 3 volt. Um, and then uh, we're going to have this output. We're going to have a little pull down resistor on there just to not worry about that. We're going to build what's called a constant current source. So this is going to go into the emitter of a BJT, which will have a resistor going to ground, and this will be our load. And for our load, we're going to have, let's say, four diodes, four LEDs. There's a little light coming off of those guys. And this is going up to a six volt. Um, so it's a very, very simple circuit. Um, uh, if you have more questions about this, you're welcome to uh, talk to us about it. But essentially, the reason why we're doing this circuit is it's a great example of using multiple components like microcontrollers, op amps, um, you know, resistors like uh, sense resistors or um, current limiting resistors, pull down resistors, so on and so forth. Um, and it's it's just a, a good um, circuit for us to dive in and, and kind of explain the, the possible subtle nuances of circuit design. So this video is also going to be a little different than the others. It's going to be probably a little less polished um, just because I'm trying to give you a more authentic um, look into uh, schematic layout and eventually board layout. Um, so there might be times when I make a mistake and have to go back or um, I say something and, and then have to correct myself. Um, bear with me, uh, but hopefully this, this process is more beneficial and, and useful to you. So without further ado, let's dive straight into Eagle which is right here. Um, now, I am kind of expecting that you've at least seen the speed run video, um, but I will go over some of those basic um, uh, things that we might not have talked about or uh, that you might not have seen in a while just to get everybody on the same page. So this is your control panel. Uh, this is kind of where you come and you start um, uh, whenever Eagle loads, it, it, it comes up to this. So you have projects right here, you have libraries, um, you also have access to your CAM processor, for instance. Um, so like this is the CAM processor that we use uh, to generate the files that we need to make your boards for you. You have your libraries right here. So any of the libraries that you've installed, um, any of the libraries like this custom library for the parts that we have that I strongly recommend you use. Um, then you also have things like design rules. So this is a great place for your advanced or basic DRCs. Uh, we'll talk about those later, but essentially those are the files that you need to make sure that your board is actually manufacturable um, in the shop. So anyway, that's the basic layout of the control panel. Today we're going to start by making a new project, um, and we're going to call this, um, well actually there's already one called Eagle Tutorial. I'm going to call this uh, Detailed Tutorial. Now obviously this is not everything um, in Eagle, uh, but uh, hopefully this kind of um, gives you a, a good insight into um, what you need to feel more comfortable using it. So as you can see, that green circle means that this is our active project, so we can actually access the new menu, and we're going to create a new schematic today. Um, now don't be afraid if, if your background is uh, not uh, like a canvas beige and it might be white. I chose beige because it reminds me of engineering paper, and, and I kind of like that, but uh, having this right next to us means that we can quickly reference our drawing and take this simple drawing that we've made and make it a little more detailed um, for our schematic itself. So, uh, by the way, in order to, um, to see better, I'm going to turn my grid on by typing grid on. Um, but I shouldn't forget that that little dotted cross here right there, that is my anchor point. So what, as I lay components down, um, I want to keep them kind of near that anchor. So I'm going to add a part by typing in add or ADD. And this will bring up a menu of all the parts that I have access to. And there are two ways to search this. You can either search via the sub library by clicking one of those and type in frame, for instance. Or if I know exactly what I'm looking for, I can type that in with what are called wildcards on each side. 
Um, so don't forget those asterisks um, or splats, I guess. Um, what those do is it basically says anything that has these characters together and it can include any characters before and any characters after. Um, and as we saw, this came with the same sublibrary or popped up the same sublibrary. And we want an A size sheet of paper in landscape. So I'll hit OK. And now it's following my mouse around. So we'll quickly talk about that. Uh, while it, before I set it down, if I right click, it rotates, which is very convenient. Um, I'm going to set that down right next to the origin. Let's say, I'm, uh, by the way, to escape or to get back to a default mode, you just hit escape once. We'll take you back to your menu that you were on if you hit it twice. It takes you back to the group selection or move tool. So if I want to move this, I would do a box selection and then I have to grab it at the anchor point, which is that little red crosshair right there. So with that being a group, I can grab it by the anchor point and move it around. If I weren't using the that anchor point, you can see it didn't select everything together. I'll hit control Z to move that back to where it was. So all right. Now that we have other stuff on there, by the way, if you middle mouse click and hold that, it allows you to pan and then zooming is just scroll with the mouse wheel. So I think that's all the navigation. Uh, again, if I missed anything, check the speed run. Um, but if you notice down here, it says that this is an untitled schematic and we have it saved it. So let's do that next. So I'm gonna hit control S to save it. And I'll call this detailed if I can spell it right. There we go. All right, now if I scroll out and scroll back in, it updates the graphics so we can see it has a name now and it was last auto-saved on the 28th of March at 3.24 p.m. So now I can kind of refocus myself and I'm gonna start adding those components that we were talking about earlier. So the first thing I need to add is the ATtiny85. Now, in order to find that, I'm not exactly sure where that is or which sub-library it's in. So I'm just going to search generally for ATtiny. And you can see there are lots of different components around here. There's this one from the SparkFun library, um, which is a surface mount, so I don't want to use that one. Um, there is this one, which we give you guys in the um, in the uh, the ELC parts library. So this one is the one I'm going to use because you guys have the most access to it. But I'm just going to put that down right there, and I'll zoom in. Now you can see I could place another one if I want to, but I don't, so I'm going to hit Escape. And now that I'm back in my add menu, I can look for my next part that I want to add, which let's see, the next thing to add are probably our two resistors. So I'm going to search for everything, which takes me back to my default menu. And then I'm going to click because I know it's in the RCL sub library. If I select one of those, you can see I can move my mouse key or use my, sorry, my, my navigation keys, my, my arrows to go up and down. So I'm going to type in RCL and it takes me to the resistor, capacitor, and inductor library. By hitting the right arrow, I can go in there and I'll go all the way down to the US symbol. Now, there are a couple different packages here. Um, you can see the symbol or this red image is for the schematic. Those all look the same in this part or in the sub, sub, sub library. But you can see the footprint right here looks different depending on which one we're, look, we're going for. So the first two numbers here correspond to the diameter of the resistor, so that's uh, probably two millimeters in diameter and about seven millimeters from uh, one edge to the other edge. And then the dash seven tells me where my, my holes are. So green means it's a through hole pad. Um, so these holes are, are uh, seven millimeters apart. So this is a pretty good package to use. If I wanted to conserve board space and I wanted my resistor to be vertical, I could use the same package size, so the 0207, but instead of the holes being seven millimeters apart, I would choose 2V, which stands for two vertical. So if you imagine the resistor coming out of the screen right here, and then the lead goes right back down next to it on that side. So it doesn't really matter which one we use. So I'll stick with this 0207-7 for now. And I'll place one, two resistors. And I'm not worried about where they are. We'll do that layout in a bit. But the next thing I want to add are my LEDs. So I'll hit escape once to go back to this menu. And on this one, I know they're in the LED menu, so I could navigate out here and type in LED. Um, but once I'm in here, it's kind of hard to know what to look for there. You can see there are lots of different footprints and packages. Um, I happen to know that it's in this sublibrary, but if I wanted to search, I could do asterisk five asterisk millimeter. And I know that's probably gonna pull up a five millimeter LED. And as I scroll through here, you can see there are lots of different components. Oh, and there's LED right there. 
And if I go in the capital LED sublibrary, we can see here we have a nice little five millimeter LED. So I'll go ahead and hit one, two, three, four, and I think, did we say four or five? Uh, four, we'll throw in five just for kicks. Actually, that's probably bad practice. I won't teach you guys that. So you can use the delete key. If you click on an anchor point, by the way, it allows you to move that around. And again, right click lets me rotate. And if I middle mouse click, I'll, I'll show you guys that in a little bit, but that does something fun. All right, the last component, uh, I guess we have two. We have this op amp, and then we need a component for our power. So the three volts, the six volts, and the ground. And all three of these grounds are gonna be connected, so we only have to use one for those. All right, so I'm gonna add a part, and I'm going to clear my search menu. So it brings everything back up. I'm gonna click back in the library, and I'm going to go to the pinhead library. Now, because I don't really care how the power comes into this board, I can use a three pin header um, and one of them will be six volts, one of them will be three volts, and one of them will be ground. And that allows me to um, use a very quick and easy to find part without having to make individual parts for each one. There's a detailed video in this playlist about how to build custom components, which is a very good skill to have, but if I don't need to, I typically avoid uh, taking the time to build a, build a part for that. So. All right, now this component is right here and it's ready to go, but if I click it um, uh, and, and place it right there, you'll notice that it has the leads coming off to the left. I don't really like that. I wanna mirror it, and because I'm in the schematic, it won't flip it to the bottom, and that'll make more sense in a second, um, in our next video, I should say. Um, but I, I want it to go to the other side. So while I'm holding the left click, I'll middle mouse once, and that mirrors it for me. So now it's going on the right side. So I, I left click again to, to place it and hit escape. And now I'm back in my default menu. The last component that we need to add is called the op amp. And you guys know that, it should be too bad. And I don't remember where it is, so I'm gonna search for star 358. And there is quite a lot in here. Let's see, what about this spark fun? That one looks pretty good. So under spark fun, their sub library, um, LM358 is right there, that's a good one. Linear is another good reference. We don't want the surface mount, those red pads mean it's surface mount. We want the through hole, which we could use that one as well. So of these two, I think I like the linear one more, so I'm gonna go with that one for starters. All right, and we're only gonna use one of those op amps, um, so I'll place it right there, but I don't want the other pins to sit unused, so I'm gonna place it down as well. Um, and you notice we have IC1A and IC1B, so it's the same integrated circuit, IC1, one is, um, I, in the 358 there are two op amps, so there's the op amp A and op amp B. That's just a nice way for us to know that they're both there. However, if you notice, we're missing the power rail. Uh, you can also tell because it goes pin one, two, three, and then five, six, and seven, so we're missing pins four and eight. The way to get that power rail is you can either right click and go to invoke, on yeah, right click on the anchor point, or we can use the invoke command and then just left click on the anchor point once. And now you'll see why it didn't show up. We have to request the yeah, request the power rail specifically. So I'll hit that, click OK. And now I could place this anywhere I wanted to, but personally I think it makes the most sense to have it near the op amp. So I know what that corresponds with. Okay, let's review our schematic again. So we have four diodes. Uh, we have, oh, we need our transistor. Um, so we have four diodes. We have our power inputs. We have two resistors, an op amp, and a microcontroller. Let's add the two in 3904. So this is a BJT or a bipolar junction transistor. Um, and it's just a pretty good basic package for us. Uh, all of these are what are called inline pack or uh, offset packages. So you can see it's pin out or um, these two are in a line, but this one's offset from each other. So in the shop, we carry what's called the inline package. So uh, I happen to find this here in the sub sub library. Um, all three of these pads, as they're called, are in line with each other. So because that's the part that we stock, that's the one that I want to use. So I'm gonna click OK, and I'll just place it right there. I'll hit Escape, and now we finally have all of our parts together. Now we could just have them you know, splayed out wherever they are and run the wires and everything would be okay. But that would be kind of messy, and I, I don't really like that a ton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange it similar to what I have here. Um, and then I'll, I'll show you how we'll connect everything. So 
the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to move my LEDs. So I'll do a box select and then click one of their anchor points so I can move them together. I'll move my microcontroller over here. My op amp goes between the two. My jumper can go anywhere. This one can go anywhere as well. And let's see, I have one resistor as a pull down right there. Maybe I'll move this apart a little more. And then my other resistor goes below my transistor, which is right here. All right, let's kind of condense this a little more so it's a little cleaner. And we can start to lay things out. Now, this schematic is simple enough. I probably could just route everything together and connect them all. Um, however, uh, I'm going to do something called air netting. So first, let's start by using our net tool right here. You can also access that by typing net. And this allows us to collect or connect our signal lines together. So I'm going to use pin one on the AT tiny and connect it to my positive inverting rail. And I'll connect my pull down resistor like so. Next, let's add the power rails to the op amp. And we'll connect all of these together and connect those to the collector of our transistor. Okay. I need to add our main power rail there. Okay. And then that connects like that. Let's add our ground over here and our three volt line right there. Okay. Oh, I guess. So because I don't want this op amp to just float, I'm going to actually connect all three pins together. So essentially what this is going to do is um, these two will try and equal each other and the output will um, try to do its best to help that be possible. And because they're all connected, it's going to be very, very easy for it to do and not stress or strain that op amp. Okay, I think all my wiring is done. Oh, I need to add my power rails. Okay, all the netting is done. And you might ask, well, what about these ground lines? Oh, I guess I also need to connect my non-inverting line. So I'll do a box selection there. Okay, this is an excellent example of why air netting is a good idea. So you can see, I could just simply move these things over um, and there's no harm, no foul. Right now we have a nice clean schematic again, but what if I didn't want to? What if I wanted to keep kind of these components all close, but I don't want this zigzaggy net going around everywhere. In order to kind of clean this up, I could simply give these the same name and that will connect them in the physical world even though they're not connected in the schematic. And that's using the name tool. So for example, I could call this one um, uh, VREF and this one VREF and it will ask me if I'm sure I wanna connect those two and by giving them the same name, they're essentially connected already. Now. I don't want to do that just because I feel like that clutters it a little too much. So I'm going to manually connect those just like so. All right, let's see what's next. Um, what I am actually going to do is I'm going to separate these two um, for a bit of uh, an argument, I guess, later. But let's get back to naming. So once that we do want to name, I don't want all of those grounds to be connected. That would just clutter the board too much. So by giving them all the same name, G and D, those will now be connected in the board, even though they don't appear to be connected in the schematic. And this just makes it easier for us um, as engineers to, um, to, to understand that those pins are not um, it's, it's easier for us to look at this schematic and recognize that those are connected uh, without having lines going everywhere because otherwise you're kind of chasing, um, you're, you're chasing wires and that just gets really, really difficult really, really quickly. 
All right, almost done here. Let's see, that needs to be a six volt line. Okay, now here is something interesting we could do. Um, no, oh, I guess we also need to do this one. We'll call it V signal. All right, all of these are connected. Um, to me personally, this still looks a little messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to box around things and kind of combine them together into what's called a group. So by right clicking, I can make a new group and call it microcontroller. And now if I drag that box, it pulls everything with me as opposed to having to constantly do a box select and click and move and drag and it's just sort of a pain so I can make a new group instead of adding this to the microcontroller I'll make a new group for this one called const current oh something's wrong here oh it grabbed that anchor point let's go ahead and right click this and say remove from constant current there we go that's better All right, what's left? Let's make a group for this one. We'll call it power. And finally, we'll make a group for this one and we'll call it, uh, what should we call it? Um, spare parts, <laughs> why not? Okay, so these are all of our groups. Um, it's a very simple schematic, uh, but you can see how um, much cleaner it is to kind of see what's going on without um, without needing to, to constantly you know be aware of, of what's connected to what and uh, for instance uh, another advantage of this if I am looking at a new schematic I could go oh this circuit right here is the entire circuit for the microcontroller so I can immediately know what's important for that circuit or that sub circuit so if something were wrong with say my constant current source I wouldn't be worried so much uh, immediately, at least with you know the spare parts over here. I would want to focus on this circuit by itself, and by having this nice little dashed box line around it, it makes it easier for me to recognize uh, what's crucial and, and what's critical. So that's that's kind of my um, justification, I guess, for for using this. Um, but that, in essence, is our entire circuit. So I'm going to hit save. I should have done that while I was working on this. Um, but yeah, there you go. At this point, we will pick up next time uh, with laying out a board in more detail. So uh, in essence, though, the things that we learned about today, we have um, grouping things. That's different than last time. Uh, you can right click to rotate. You can left click to mirror or middle click rather. My apologies. Um, you also don't have to worry about clicking anchor points, uh, which is nice. You can just click anywhere along that uh, that dashed line. Um, and then we learned about um, laying out parts, searching for parts, and uh, general layout. So thank you so much, and we will see you guys in the next video.